Hi, in this video and in the next one, we will implement a very simple example of a support vector machine, and we will use it to identify the parts of speech of sentences in Cook Islands, Maori. And by the way, this picture is of the island of Rarotonga, a place, a name that we'll be using in this slide here. So, um, let's say we want to get a sentence of Cook Islands, Maori, and then tag each word with its part of speech. So we have the sentence, Kwaaire Tereki Rarotonga. Tere went to Rarotonga. And we have the tense aspect marker as the first word, Kua, to indicate that it's the past. Aire is the verb go. Tere is the name of someone, Tere. Ki is to, it's a preposition. And then Rarotonga is a noun because it's a place. Kua aire tere ki rarotonga. A tense aspect marker, the verb, um, the noun, a preposition, and a noun. So let's say we type kua aire tere ki rarotonga on the computer and we want the computer to tell us ten, uh, tam v n prep n. We need to figure out what features we can use to train our support vector machine. We could specify the words themselves as features. Maybe we could have a feature that is the word, for example, rarotonga or ki. So we have a feature that is the word. And then we could also have a feature for the context. We could have the feature of the word before. So if we have the word rarotonga, the word that comes before it is ki. We could have, uh, and we do this because usually nouns have prepositions next to them. So we could use this information to identify that if you have a preposition before you, you're probably a noun. We could use the a feature for the word after. For example, Rarotonga is at the end of the line. So we could use like just a marker that says end of line then the computer could learn a pattern like nouns are usually followed by the end of the line. So maybe if I see the end of the line, this is going to be a noun. And when we have uh, the two context features working together, you know, the computer is going to say, I see a preposition here and I see the end of the line here. So what comes in the center is usually a noun. And those are the kinds of patterns that it will learn to identify the words. So let's use three features, the word, the preceding word, and the following word. How are we going to do this? We could have a table like this. The first column is the previous word. The second column is the word. The third column is the following word. And then we have the part of speech. So for the first one, kua, Kua does not have a previous word, so we just have a null for the previous word of kua. Then the word kua itself, then its following word, aire, and then the part of speech of kua, a tense aspect marker, a tense aspect mood marker. And so we do this for every single word. For example, for the word ki, the preposition to, we have the word ki, the preceding word, tere, the following word, rarotonga, and the part of speech for ki, preposition. And so we make list, um, lists like these for every single word that we have in our training set. The word, the previous, and the following, and the part of speech for the train, uh, from the training set. And... Um, you're probably thinking, well, that video in the, in the support vector machine seemed to use numbers, but you are giving me words. How are we going to do this? We're going to transform those numbers into words. I'm sorry, those words into numbers. We're going to do a process called encoding of the list. There's several types of encoder. Uh, a very popular one is one hot encoding. Um, we'll explain it later, where you have a vector of zeros and then just a one 
for this is a certain type of word and zeros for this is not all of the other words. We're not going to use one hot encoding. We're going to use something called ordinal encoder, which is going to transform each of the words into a numerical code like this. Let's say we have um, this vector for the parts of speech, noun, preposition, tense aspect marker, and verb. And these are the four classes in which we want to classify words in this very simple example. So we're going to take them in alphabetical order and assign numbers to them. So n is going to be the first one, so it's the zeroth element. One, two, three. So for example, we could convert all of the labels verb into just category three. All of the labels tam into category two, and so forth. We're also going to, um, once we have the transformation of the labels, the input is going to look something like this. The column for the parts of speech now has numbers. And as you can see, um, for the first one, for example, the word kua is a tense aspect marker, and it is tagged with a number two, which corresponds to a tense aspect marker. The word aire in the second row is a verb, and it is stacked with the number three, which corresponds to verbs. We will also do this with the words themselves, with every word in our data set. So for example, if we make a list of all of our unique words, such that we have nothing, aire, ki, kua, rarotonga, and tere, and then we assign a number to them alphabetically, we're gonna get a matrix matrix that looks like this. The col For the column word itself, the first word is word three, which is kua. In the second row, it's word one, aire. In the third row, the word itself is number five, tere. In the fourth row, the word itself is number two, ki. And in the, uh, in the fifth row, the word itself is number four, rarotona. So now we have converted our words into numbers, and this the computer can manipulate. So we have here three features that have to do with a word, the word itself, the preceding word, the following word. We've converted them into numbers, and we're going to feed these features into a support vector machine and hope that and tell it uh, that some combinations, for example, the third and fifth rows, 152 and 240, both belong to the part of speech zero, which is a noun. So the computer is going to have to figure out what makes the third row 152 and the fifth row 240 similar so that they're both types of uh, part of speech number zero and also different from other parts of speech. Uh, again, in summary, encoding allows us to transfer to transform words into numbers so that we can have this, the, the matrix on, uh, at the top as our input, um, blank, kua, aire, tense aspect marker, for example, and transform that into numbers, 0, 3, 1, 2. This is going to be the data that the support vector machine is going to calculate. And then we're going to convert back and forth between our encoded numbers and our actual labels for words. In summary, we're going to make a system that can take a, a sentence in Cook Islands Maori, such as Kwa Aire Mere, Mary went. Here, for example, the first word is Kua, which is a tense aspect marker. We're gonna take that word and construct a feature vector. The feature vector is gonna be the word that comes before kua, which is nothing, the word itself, which is kua, and the word that follows kua, aire. Nothing, kua, aire. These are gonna be the features. We're gonna convert those features into an encoding, zero, three, one. 
um, the computer is going to assign numbers to them so that the support vector machine can learn from those numbers. And we're going to feed that encoding into a support vector machine and the computer is going to give us a prediction of the part of speech, which is number two, for example. And then we're going to have to decode that number two and turn it into tense aspect mark. So that uh, when you're typing this, this sentence, uh, you're going to print Kua and then it's going to calculate all this and print tense aspect marker. That way, the computer is going to tell you the parts of speech for each word in a Cook Islands Maori sentence. That's a quick summary again. In the last two weeks, we have been specifying features. Some of them are the presence or absence of a word that lets us do things like clustering. Uh, we have features for the number of times we see a word. Uh, we, uh, we use naive base approaches to uh, take the counts of words to then learn from this and be able to predict probabilities, like how often would such a word be associated to such a label. And now we are taking words themselves and making them interchangeable with numbers so that we can use classification algorithms so that uh, like support vector machines. This is what we're going to do this week. Next week, when we look at neural networks and deep learning, we are going to uh, build on features, but we're also going to look at some architectures that don't ask you for the features. They try to find the features themselves. More on this next week.